2.4 continued, the slope. We already kind of talked about this. Let's talk a little more in depth. The slope M of the line through points X1, Y1, and X2, Y2 is given by M, which we can think of as the rise over the run, which is the same as delta Y over delta X. Delta just means change. And most commonly where you'll want to use it is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Okay, so we'll see a few examples doing that. Um, if x2 minus x1 is equal to zero, the bottom zero, the slope is undefined. That would look something like this, like the equation x equals two. That's an undefined slope because, yeah, it does go up, but we don't have any sort of horizontal component. If y2 minus y1 equals zero, that means the numerator is zero, then the slope is zero. So we just get something that's flat, something like y equals negative three. And you can see in that case, the range, in fact, so that is a function. It passes the vertical line test, but its range is actually literally only the number negative three. Okay, so that was the one exception we talked about back in the beginning of 2.4. So example, find the slope of the line through the given points, one, three, and three, eight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick one of them to be my X1 and my Y1, and one of them to be my X2 and my Y2. And then I'm literally just going to plug it in so let's see what we get here. Y2 minus Y1 is eight minus three. X2 minus X1 is three minus one. That's gonna be five over two. So that means we can get sort of a visual here. If this is one, three, and we have three, eight, which is up here. And the thing to notice here is that I'm going over two and I'm going up by five. You can make a little right triangle out of it. Okay. Let's go over here. How about this one for B? Negative two, one, and one negative five. Well, I'll go ahead, I'll do the same thing. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. M is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, or negative five minus one over one minus negative two, which is one plus two. This then is going to be negative six over three, or negative two. I guess I'll leave it as over one. So negative two, one is right here, and one, negative five is right here. I'll connect the dots. And as you can see, in this one, I can go down by two and over by one. Okay, so you can still visualize it in the same sort of way. Okay, my suggestion when you have a negative slope, Always apply it to the numerator. That way you're always going from left to right. It's just a negative slope. You move down rather than up. So that would be my suggestion. Now what if you have some equations and they want to know the slope and the y-intercept? Well, in easy cases like this, you can pull it right off. Your slope is equal to 2 here. And your y-intercept is 0, negative 4. So sometimes it's nice and easy like that. What about in a case like this, negative four y equals five x, that's not in that nice y equals mx plus b form. But I can put it in that form by dividing both sides by negative four. This would tell me that y is equal to negative five over four x. And just so it's easier to see the y-intercept, I could add plus zero, now it's in that form. So I see that the slope is negative five over four. That means to get to the next point, if I'm already at a point on the line, I'm going to move down five and over to the right by four. And I see that my y-intercept is just zero comma zero. How about in a case like this? Easy enough, I'm just solving for y to get into that. y equals mx plus b form. Three y equals negative four x plus 12. Divide both sides by three. 
So then we have y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 4. And you can see then that your slope is negative 4 over 3. So you move down 4 over 3. And that your y-intercept is 0, 4. And that will do it. We'll have one more video on 2.4.